Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to adjust the valves on this CBX engine that we're building. And this applies to all of the dual overhead cam Honda engines from uh, 1979 through 1983. So it really covers the CBX, uh, the CB750F, uh, all the CB750s in 79, uh, the CB900, uh, both the F and the, uh, the 900 Custom, and the CB1100F from 1983. So it, it really covers all of the dual over cam uh, engines that take the same shims. So the first thing you want to do is you want to draw a diagram of the engine, and in this case, it's the CBX, of course. So you have cylinder number one, two, three, four, five, six. And the, you know, the number one cylinder is always the one at the left as you're sitting on the bike. So if you're sitting on the bike, this is one, two, and it goes from left to right, and so on. And that's true with all the bikes. So number one is always on the left. But because of the way I have the engine sitting here, I've got it reversed the other way around. But anyway, just, you just have to remember that. So uh, now when I put this engine together, I put the same shim size in all of the buckets because it just makes it easier when you first put the engine together because that way you're not, you're not having to figure out which shim is where. So... In this case, they're all 280s. So you draw this diagram, and what you'll do is you will check the valve clearance, and you want to record the valve clearance right underneath here as what is existing. And then the shop manual has a chart, and this is the chart right here. So you measure the valve clearance, and, and in this case, if your valve clearance is 14 to 16 thousandths and you have a number 250 shim, then you have to replace that shim with a 255. And that's true, you know, you just do the cross-reference like that. So if, you're, if your uh, clearance is 22 thousandths to 26 thousandths and you have a 250, then you put a 265 in there. So you just follow that chart. So you have to check each valve clearance and you write, you write down the clearance in each one of the valves and you record it right here. So then, or I'm sorry, you, you record it right here underneath this 280. So then when you look on the chart and when you find out which size shim you're gonna replace that 280 with, then you write that down here. And then once you have all those written down, then you just systematically go through the engine and replace, you know, this number one intake with that shim and the number two intake with that shim and so on and so forth. So I'll go ahead and start the process and then you can follow along. So the feeler gauges I've got a couple of different ones here that I use because depending on which valve you're checking and what the conditions are around that valve, you know, you kind of have to have a couple of different uh, feeler gauges depending on whether they've got, you know, a little kink in them like that or whether they're straight or whatever because, I mean, we're talking using really thin uh feeler gauges. This one's two thousandths and this one's three thousandths. I, I mean, it's like paper thin and you end up breaking them and, and all of that. As you can see here, I've got remnants of old feeler gauges that were broken and so on. So anyway, then uh, these bikes take a special tool that you check the valves with and this is one example, this is another example, and I'll show you how to use these. 
And then this right here is how you pry out the uh, shim and so on. So I'll show you how to use those. Then you refer to the shop manual and basically it's pretty easy because you check the valve clearance and it's pretty much three thousandths in all the valves. So that really makes it easy. And then there's a, there's a uh, guide here that tells you as you rotate the engine down at the crankshaft where you set the where you set the T mark as you rotate the engine here uh, you line up you know like the number two exhaust valves and you know you open up two exhaust and you check number two intake number one exhaust and number three exhaust so it, it kind of cuts the monotony down so again I'll show you the process of how to do that. So when we start, the first thing you do when you start to adjust the valves is if you refer to the shop manual at the sequence here. So when you, again, you know, you open up two exhausts, then you check two intake, one exhaust, three exhaust. So when you line up your T-mark on your crank, the number two exhaust is already open, is already wide open. So now you check the clearance on number uh, one exhaust, number three exhaust, and number two intake. So I've already checked my number one exhaust. And so this first one, the number three, the three thousandths uh, fit in there perfectly. Um, on the second lobe, uh, I can barely get uh, a, two thousand, or a two thousandths in there. I can barely get it in there. So that, that valve is too tight. So again, as you recall, I put 280 shims in every one of these uh, buckets. So what I need to do now is I need to refer to the chart and see what my next shim size should be. So if you look at this chart, like I said, my, my clearance is less than two thousandths or in, in the case of millimeters, it's, it's uh, 0.02. So, or I'm sorry, 0.05. So this is the 0.05 here. Mine is less than that, and I've got a 280. So if it were somewhere in the neighborhood of 0.01 to 0.05 millimeters with a 280, then I should, you know, you look here to see what's in your in your engine and then you look down to see what they suggest that you put. Now mine was less than 0.05 so I'm going to put a 270 in there. I'm going to go down one notch and put a 270 in there. So I use this tool right here, which is really, it works really great. Um, the concept is that you put this in right in the center, you use this, uh, this surface on the cam, and you put this right on the center, and this, this has kind of a, a notch in it, or a, or a groove, whatever you want to call it, and so this portion of the tool pushes the, the, uh, the bucket down and separates it from the cam. So you end up with a gap between the camshaft and the shim. That way you can pull the shim out. So you just 
wrap that around there and then rotate it around. And as you rotate it, it will push the bucket down. Just like that. Then you can get something in there, put it in the, in the notch of the bucket and pry the uh, shim out. And th this tool works really well. It's got a very, very thin uh, edge to it. I think they sell these on eBay. Um, but anyway, it's got the exact width that it should have to uh, slip into the notch there and pry the, uh, the shim out. I will try to demonstrate that. So again, this tool has separated the shim from the cam, as you can see there. Then you take this tool, stick it into the slot there, And as you can see, it popped the, uh, the shim out of there. Then you take your magnet, and just pull it out of there just like that. So then I take my 270 and I attach it back onto the magnet again. Just makes it a little easier so it doesn't fall down in. And then I take the same tool and just press it in to the bucket. Just like that. So then, once you've done that, then you can pull this back out and you'll see the buckets rise back up again. Just like that. So now I have all my uh, valves adjusted and here is my final chart that I made uh, as I adjusted the valves. So as you can see here, I wrote down all of the, what was existing, uh, my clearances, and then that's what these are. Uh, so each cylinder, as you know, has Two, two intake and two exhaust. So these were the uh, measured clearances. And when I when I looked at my chart, then the chart told me which size shim that I should replace it with. And as you can see, a lot of them remain to be 280. Some of them I did change as you can see there. And basically that's how you do it. So you just have to uh, write down what, what your clearances are and you look on the chart and the chart will tell you what size shim that you have to put in there. So that's gonna do it for this short video on the valve adjustment. Um, I need to order some uh, shims that are different sizes than what I have. Uh, so I've got to, uh, I've got a couple of sizes that I have to order. So I will continue on with that valve adjustment. And then on the next video, we're gonna uh, be cleaning up the valve cover and getting the clutch uh, assembly ready to install along with the alternator. 
uh, the, uh, the rest of the engine um, covers and the uh, oil filter and so on. And then, uh, you know, we'll start wrapping up this engine. And one of the things that I'm going to go over is taking such as this, this clutch cover here, which is supposed to be, it's not supposed to be painted like that. It's supposed to be a polished aluminum. And what I'll do is I'll show you how to bring it back to looking like this again, the way it should. So anyway, stay tuned for that. I will probably have that video coming uh, early next week. So uh, stay tuned for that. And please remember to subscribe, share, like, comment. I will uh, respond to all of the comments. And uh, please, again, please subscribe. It helps support the channel. And uh, thank you for all of you who have subscribed so far. And uh, anyway, I have a lot of great videos coming up. So again, thank you for watching.